In this video, we will show you how floating point numbers are represented, stored, and how we can work with them. We will also study the elaborated example Euler number from series 3, but we'll first switch to the Python online tutorial to see how floating point numbers are represented and stored in computer hardware. Floating point numbers are stored in memory in a binary form. So the decimal fraction from the base 10 notation is converted to a binary fraction. This binary value is stored as part mantissa and part exponent. For the mantissa, usually 53 bits are provided. The exponent that is stored is a power of 2. For example, the decimal value 1 tenth is converted to a binary representation. This binary value has an infinite repetitive character, so the decimal value 0.1 cannot be represented exactly as a base 2 fraction. The binary representation of 0.1 has these values as mantissa and exponent. This value is very close to the value of 1 tenth, but is not exactly the same. So an approximate binary value is stored. Python users are not always aware of these round softs because of the way the values are displayed. After all, Python prints a decimal approximation of the true decimal value, which is stored in base 2. We will now demonstrate this in PyCharm. We start an interactive session and enter the value 1 tenth. The result we get seems identical, although the stored value is the binary value closest to this number. Python gives us a rounded off value here, but we'll use the stored value for calculation purposes. If we now calculate the sum of these three values, we see that Python uses stored values for calculation. In this case, we do not get exactly 3 tenths or 0.3 as a result, but a value that is slightly greater. When we check this again, by comparing both expressions, we notice that the stored value for 3 tenths or 0.3 is not exactly equal to the sum of the three stored values for one tenth. Even if we compare both in this way, false is returned. If, however, you compare the rounded off values of the left member, rounded off to 10 digits after the decimal point, with the rounded off value of the right member, rounded off to 10 digits after the decimal point, then you see that these values are equal. Two decimal numbers should therefore be considered equal if they get close enough to each other, that is, if the difference between them is sufficiently small. In our calculations, an approximation of six digits after the comma will usually be sufficient to conclude that the numbers are equal. If we apply this to the above example, it looks like this. Take the difference between both values. To avoid that this difference is negative, we take its absolute value. We compare this difference with the value 10 to the minus sixth. If this comparison yields true, then both numbers are sufficiently close to each other and we can consider them to be equal. And indeed, the difference between both numbers is sufficiently small. We get true as a result of this comparison. In this session, we will also briefly introduce the functions int and round, as well as the floor and seal methods of the math module. These functions and methods can all be applied to floating point numbers, but return different results. For example, we want to apply it to Euler's number. This number can be obtained from the math module. To do this, we must first import this module into our session. We retrieve the value of e from the math module and get a decimal representation of the binary stored number. We apply the int function to this 
and we get an integer as a result. The digits after the decimal point were truncated. The function round applied to the number e returns a number rounded off to, int to an integer value. This can be rounded up or down depending on the last significant digit. However, the function round can also round off numbers to a specific precision, for example, to three digits after the decimal point. These functions can also be applied to negative numbers. In those cases, you will get a truncated or a rounded negative number. Let's now examine the method floor from the math module. This method always returns the largest integer value that is smaller than the specified value. This means that in this case, you get as a result the value minus 3. In an analogous manner, with the seal method, you obtain the smallest integer value greater than the specified value. If we apply this to math.e, we get the result 3. Applied to minus math.e, we get the result minus 2. So in both cases, we get the smallest integer value that is greater than the specified value. By way of example, we look at the use of floating point numbers in Euler's number exercise from series 3. Here we should calculate the number e as sum of the specified series. We need to write each partial sum until it approximates the value of e stored in the math module up to seven digits after the comma. We now switch to the solution of the Euler exercise in PyCharm. In order to use the value of E from the math module, we must first import this module. We now need to calculate and print a finite number of partial sums and each time compare this new partial sum to the value E from the math module. These steps must be repeated as long as the difference between the calculated sum and the value of e stored in the math module is more than 10 to the minus 7th. To this end, we will use the while loop. We initialize the series. i gets the value 0, the factorial of 0 is 1.0, and the first partial sum e equals 1.0 as well. We print this calculated sum e rounded off to seven digits after the comma. As long as the calculated value e and the value of e stored in the math module differ more than 10 to the minus 7, we will calculate a new term, add it to the already calculated sum e and we will print the rounded result. We run this script and get the same result as in the donor. To check the different steps in the loop, we also print the non-rounded sum at each step. So we add a print instruction both at the startup and in the loop. When we run again, we now see each time the value of the calculated e that is not rounded off and the value of the e rounded off to seven digits after the decimal point. For checking purposes, at the end of our code we will also add a print of the value of e stored in the math module, which is rounded to seven digits after the decimal point. When we run again, we find that the value of e from the math module matches our calculated value, both rounded to seven digits after the comma. So if both numbers are close enough, we can consider them as identical. This is the end of this video in which we watched how floating point numbers are represented, stored and how we can use them in calculations.